So right now, today in this video, this is the video you've been waiting for this second time around. The first time around, we were waiting for me to paint the entire car, but since the car has been back, now I'm doing the engine bay. I mean, you might as well just drop a like right now before this video even starts. And now, you're watching the brand new pumpkin spice flavored toothpaste channel of YouTube. Welcome to Bodie Vision. Hey, so what is up and welcome. Thank you so much for joining me on yet another video. So man, pumpkin spice season is on the horizon. I can hear the basics running from here. So anyways, like I was saying at the beginning of this video, what we're going to be doing today is painting the entire engine bay on Zosh's K24 swapped Integra. If you don't know the car that I'm talking about, go back, a whole bunch of videos get back. I got this all in a playlist, blah, 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 blah. That's all there. So the first thing that I gotta do is I gotta get the entire car masked off, wiped down, and then we'll go from there. so the car is pretty much looking as ready as it's going to look there's just a couple different things that you got to be concerned with as you're doing this making sure you don't get a whole bunch of paint inside of the actual cabin so I just put some rags and then I just stuff those holes and then some tape 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 rags there's a couple that I missed I'll go back and get that before I actually prime the engine bay so that's the next step what I'm gonna use is a filler primer I'm gonna get it on there really thick and hopefully that's gonna fill in some of the scratches some of the inconsistent levels of old spray paint and old paint and even older paint because this bay had been painted a couple of times so hopefully by using that thick filler primer it's just gonna give me a nice shell over everything then I'm gonna sand that down just a little bit before I do my base coat but let me not get ahead of myself let's just get this primer mixed up and then go for it Alrighty, so it's actually the following day now, and I mean, if you take a look at it just on the camera, I mean, it probably looks pretty good. Also, I wanted to point out that now that I'm getting ready to actually paint the car, and it's a couple days later, you can see that all the masking has been replaced. That's all new, that's new, some of the things are new. And a reason why I did that is because before I actually replaced it, and then after the last clip that you saw, so between me actually spraying it and between how it is right now, I went ahead and I sanded down all the rough spots, all the inconsistencies that I could find, anything that I can touch. And that's just one thing that I wanted to show you guys is that when you're painting, don't get discouraged when things go weird because more times than not, something weird happens. For example, some of the spray paint that was on here was reacting kind of weird with my primer. Everywhere that that happened, I had to go ahead and actually sand it down. And that's to be expected. When you're painting, like I said, stuff just goes weird. There's no telling what exactly is going to happen when you introduce a new chemical to an old chemical. It could sometimes react. And the way that you got to address it is just attack it fix it and move on and then in the end hopefully it's still going to turn out just as good as it would have as if I didn't have any of those well I don't want to say issues but any of those things came up so it's all good at this point I expect them I hope they don't happen on this one they happened a little bit but that's no big deal so we are just moving right along so the next thing I got to do you know the next thing I gotta do. I gotta mix up that base coat, that cypress green pearl. Luckily I had a little bit left from when I painted his entire car so we didn't have to buy any of that. So that's really good. So we'll go ahead and get that mixed up and then it's base coat time.
done. Now the key to successfully spraying an engine bay, well to get it as good as you possibly can get it, the key is, the key is you have to adjust your gun as you're going. You gotta make paint spray in the areas that you want it to spray and not in areas where you don't want it to spray. For example, you can lower your fan way down to a nice tight circle, but keep in mind as you lower your fan size, the pressure is gonna go up. So if you bring your fan down to a nice tight circle, the pressure is gonna be through the roof. So for every, I don't know, amount that you bring down your fan, you gotta adjust the pressure accordingly as well. So for this, I wanna be spraying at anywhere between 50 to 20 psi at the gun so when the fans wide open and it's at 15 psi if I make the fan completely closed and the fan is what the pattern is of the sprayer coming out the gun if you're not familiar with what that means that's what the fan is the fan size so anyways if I'm spraying at 15 psi wide opened and then I shut the fan completely the pressure is going to go through the roof and that's not what we want to happen so now the next thing is I gotta go ahead and do the clear coat and I'm not gonna film that because of how much clear coat gets in the air. So the next clip is gonna be that clear coat. definitely happy with how that came out now it was not exactly easy to get it to this point with extending the shock towers also doing this little area right here completely custom that was kind of a challenge well it wasn't completely custom but that wasn't there before it's there now it was shaved it looks really good and then also I don't know man, it looks really good. I'm definitely happy with how it came out. And for an engine bay, people gotta understand, and I always tell people, if you're going to paint an engine bay, don't get down on yourself if this looks a little off, if that looks a little weird, because it just happens. And engine bays, if you're not shaving them completely, if you're not getting the entire engine bay sandblasted, there's gonna be some dust that lands in there. There's gonna be some rough spots. There's gonna be some imperfections without a doubt. But by the time the motor goes back in there, the suspension goes back on it, the radiator, the everything, Every single thing that goes in here now is just going to make the engine bay look that much better because this clean foundation is going to be behind it in the background where the motor and everything else is going to be in the foreground. So doing an engine bay, if it looks decent when the motor's out, it's going to look really good when the motor's in. If it looks good with the motor out, it's going to look that much better with the motor in it. So hopefully that's how it is when Zosh gets the motor put back in here, the yellow valve cover. I cannot wait to see that. Zosh, I'm one of the viewers. I'm going to be waiting and I'm going to be watching. I can't wait to see you get the motor back in the car. So I think that's going to be it for this one, you guys. Make sure you subscribe to see what else I have going on. Speaking of what else I have going on, Project Pepto content on the way and I'm thinking about doing some other stuff You're just gonna have to subscribe to find out so thank you guys so much for watching like this video comment subscribe Do all the stuff you know what it is YouTube check out the merch new stickers fully restocked well the same old stickers fully restocked Okay, I'm done talking. I'm out